Hello viewers, welcome to Talk and Beyond episode 3. Look who we have on the show today. It's none other than our very own Anu Govin. Passionate as ever as she is about solid waste management, today she is going to tell us yet another technique. Welcome to the show Anu. What else can we use these uh, peels for? Oh, these fruit peels can be used to make bioenzyme. Oh, what are bioenzymes? Actually, bioenzyme is a natural cleaning agent that can oh. be used in the house. It can be used as a pesticide uh, to treat plants. Oh. And many, many uses. It's very simple. All that we need is the fruit peels. Mm. You know, it could be orange or sweet lime or lemon, any can of the citrus yeah. fruits. Can we also use pineapple? Yeah, peel? we can also use uh, oh, pineapple. get a nice... Uh, yeah, so you get the flavor of whatever uh, fruit that we are using. You need about 300 grams of uh, fruit peels, mm. uh, 100 grams of jaggery or okay. brown sugar, yeah. a little bit of uh, yeast yeah. and one liter of water. And, uh, and if we don't use, uh, otherwise the process takes about three months. Uh -huh. When we use yeast, it is considerably Accelerate comes down. Yeah, process. so it comes down to about three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so how process. much of uh, yeast do we have to take? Yeast, just a pinch of it very little of it just to accelerate the process and then we just mix everything together. yeah so we can add the one liter of water take any yeah. uh, jar with an opening big mouth like this okay. and uh, you can add water mm -hmm. one liter of water and dissolve the jaggery into it and uh, add the fruit peels you just have to close it and mm -hmm. keep it so that is why oh we have to gosh. keep opening it just for a thing and then close it again okay. in fact the, when the gas release stops, that's when we can say it is all it is ready to use. Yeah, and uh, this is what it looks like. You know, when you put it into a jar, we can strain it and pour it into a bottle. Oh, this is the finished yes. product. Yes, this have. is the finished product that you can have. Oh, it can be used for many things. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, we can use it to uh, mop the floor. Okay. So, you know, typically we add some of these agents yeah. in a Let one bucket of water. Oh, nice smell. Nice yeah. citrusy smell. Because I've only added orange to it, you know, so yeah. you get the orange. When you add other fruits, so it's always good to keep just one fruit or one or two fruits so that the flavor is, uh, you know, smell is yeah. there. And uh, so we can use it for mopping the floor. Uh, we can use it for cleaning the uh, countertops in the kitchen, in the bathroom. It even removes the lime scale mm. on the deposits which you get because of hard water. It's very good for that also. It basically takes care of all your cleaning uh, thing. And the other advantage being because it's natural, yeah. you know, we don't feel that burning yeah. sensation, sensation in our hands. Roughness Correct. It's, it's much softer on the hands and uh, overall it helps the environment too you know finally the washed water when it's going down into the lakes and uh, yeah. it will finally clear that also so if all of us start using this yes. natural uh, agent you know cleaning agent yeah. then our lakes can be really uh, saved can we also use it for our plants yeah it can also be used so you dilute it and a uh, little bit of this add so some we water have to dilute. yeah so let's say one cup for about half liter of water yeah. and you mix it and then you have those spray things right oh. and you can just spray it for pesticides on the on plants the and uh, it can also be used on the mud or the soil mm -hmm. so that also it helps the basically it's microbes so the good microbes, good microbes. and it destroys the harmful, harmful microbes so it's really a, a wonder agent that can be used for many many, many uh, things. things yeah so thank you very much for telling us so much about these bioenzymes and they are so simple to make at Correct. home. Hey, it's snowing. I'm feeling so cold. The weather is awesome and the place fantastic. Can you tell which place is this? Wait, let me come and help you guys. Wait, wait for me. Today, Bengaluru has lost its charm and is heading towards being the most polluted city and the city without water. But they say where there is a will, there is a way. Today, we have some esteemed citizens of Bangalore who are trying to make our city a better place to live in. 
Welcome to you all. We are Ram, who is the co-founder and convener of Friends of Lake. Welcome, Ram. Thank you, ma'am. Kindly tell us about your organization. Friends of Lakes is an organization which uh, we are a group of friends who had formed this one. And uh, Friends of Lakes is something which is a little bit of an anonymous organization or you can tell it is informal organization rather. So like that it started with few others also including uh, Vishwanath and others who are water experts with them. And uh, now it has from one it has grown to practically 22 lakes. One thing you should understand specifically I am going to talk about Bangalore. Bangalore uh, has got around three rivers which enter into Bangalore or which are there in Bangalore. Bangalore has only one which exists in Bangalore is only one river that is Vrishbhavati river. The other ones are Arkavati and Dakshina Pinakini. So uh, all these three rivers which origin, uh, Vrishbhavati originates in Bangalore but uh, Dakshina Pinakini and uh, or Ponyar they call it as Ponyar belt. Uh, so Dakshina Pinakini and Arkavati they are from Nandi Hills. So but they both of them travel to Bangalore and they travel uh, Dakshina Pinakni is an independent lake which travels directly and goes and joins uh, uh, the sea in Kadlur. At the same time, uh, Arkavati goes and joins with Kaveri. So that is Arkavati, southern west part of Bangalore. Uh, Dakshina Pinakni practically covers North Bangalore and East Bangalore and certain part of uh, Southern Bangalore. So again, we divide uh, this uh, particular Bangalore into three valleys. That is one thing known as the Chalagatta Valley the Kormangla Chalagatta Valley, the next one is the Hebbal Valley and the third one is the Arkavati Valley. Now the Hebbal Valley and the Chalagatta Valley both join with the Dakshina Pinakni River. So Dakshina Pinakni River till uh, 65 kilometers is now it is totally dry. From Malur it flows but it is totally sewage that flows in this particular uh, river. But at the same time this river enters into Tamil Nadu, into Osur and later on by the time it reaches certain parts of uh, Tamil Nadu like Kaveri Patnam and other places, practically the water is drinkable. So you can understand that is how the water treats itself or redeems itself. There is something known as uh, redemption or the way that water biologically it, it re treats itself and it actually uh, nature itself does a very good job on this one. So this all happens due to certain amount of plants and wetlands and amount of uh, aeration that happens by, while it is traveling and all those kind of things. So all these lakes also? All the lakes, mm -hmm. all of them, most, except there are few standalone lakes which doesn't have a connection or else 90% of all the lakes in Bangalore connects either to the Dakshina Pinakni or to the Arkavati or to the Vrishbhavati. They will be connecting that and they will be which there is a uh, Raja Kalve, what we call it as or a canal which connects uh, each Kali. lake from one lake to other lake. So that is how the whole thing works in uh, Bangalore and you should understand many cities in the big cities which has grown you would see that most of them let it be London to New York everything will be either near a sea or a river. Now this is one city which you will see very very unique is that it is not grown around a sea nor around a river but stand alone. That is why we tell that it has grown around its lakes. lakes. So this is where the lakes play a very very important role for Bangalore. The way that it was all done and kept by the founder. Uh, one of the founders also was known as the founder of Bangalore city or what we call it as Kempegowda. We have Avinash Krishnamurti from Biome Environmental Trust. Welcome Avinash. Thank you Mrudula. And uh, please tell us about your organization. We are sitting right now in the, in, you know, next to the Vartur Lake, which has been frothing and foaming, and it's been in the news. Uh, uh, we, a bunch of people called, who we call ourselves Biome Environmental Trust, we work with uh, communities in the city to help them come together and revive and rejuvenate lakes. So that's one of the things we do. Otherwise, we also work on various water and sanitation issues of the country. But historically, uh, what we call lakes were actually irrigation tanks. So they were tanks that uh, uh, kings and uh, uh, in the old system, uh, kings patronized. Tanks were built, they became the backbone of agriculture. Uh, they drove irrigation, but they also recharged groundwater and all the domestic uh, you know, drinking and domestic water needs were taken care by wells which, uh, which got water from the uh, water recharged by the tanks. And traditionally there was a system where the community would take care of these tanks because it meant a lot to them, it meant their livelihood. Life. Yeah, it meant their agriculture uh, could not survive without it. So there would be a system where the community would come together, take decisions on how the water will be shared, there would be a role called the Nirganti who implemented these decisions 
and communities got together, desilted. The value of the silt was very important. The silt uh, also contributed to agriculture as, as much as the water did. So this is a broad, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of narrative of the history of lakes here. And of course, as the city has moved in and the city has eaten up the lakes, uh, these tanks, the nature of the lake has changed. The irrigation function has gone. So the question to all of us is now what does a lake mean in the new urban context? Okay. How are these lakes maintained and who is there to take care? Officially, the BBMP is responsible, is what is called the custodian of the lakes okay. in Bangalore. However, there are many agencies involved. For example, the Karnataka Pollution Control, State Pollution Control Board is responsible to make sure the lakes are monitored and do not get polluted. So from a pollution perspective, Karnataka State Pollution Control Board is important. The BWSSP, which is the Bangalore Water Supply and Sewerage Board, is responsible for the supply of water and management of sewage that comes out of the city. There is the organization called the Karnataka Lake Con Conservation and Development Authority, which is an authority in Karnataka responsible for all the lakes, specifically the conservation and development of it. So there are different agencies responsible for different parts of it. And that's one of the reasons things are complicated in terms of BDA, BBMP, official custodians from the government. However, as citizens, these are public spaces, we should take pride of it and we should also be a part of the process that, uh, uh, that revives it. We also have Ilan Govan, uh, who's from Whitefield Rising and he's the volunteer of Lakes. Welcome Ilan. Yeah, thanks a lot Nudula, thanks for having me. Whitefield Rising is a platform for engaged citizens uh, who want to contribute uh, back to the governance in the city. Uh, we work in different areas, whoever is passionate about whatever cause, we provide the platform for them to take it to the next level and uh, make the changes that they want happen. Um, for example, if you take solid waste management, you met yeah. uh, Anuradha Gobind, right? Uh, she's part, she drives the solid waste group in uh, Whitefield Rising. I drive the lakes group. Um, uh, we have people who are working on the million water rising. Uh, we also arrange for the candidates to come and uh, talk about you know, what their agenda is, how they will do a better job than the other candidates. Uh, and then we provide the data back to the voters so that they can make an informed choice on um, you know, who, who they should be uh, have as their representative. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have uh, a group working on uh, street dogs, taking care of the street dogs. Street we have a group which is volunteering for the government schools, teaching uh, English and, uh, you know, make, and uh, providing additional help to the teachers in the government schools so and we have a group which is working on traffic which is working on you know improving the roads the infrastructure uh, we have volunteers who are part of the what committee uh, you know so they're part of the you know, formal governance model um, so I, I i take care of the lakes group where we work with uh, different lakes in this area uh, so i started with uh, Vartur lake um, uh, i think we have come a long way from where we started now we just need the government to go ahead and uh, make the solution happen uh, lakes used to be an asset for the yeah. city. Uh, now, and now uh, it has become th a they have become a liability. Uh, yeah, main, ma yeah. yeah, main reason is uh, these haven't been desilted for about 47 years, right? Now, Vartur Lake was last desilted, I think, in 1970. And uh, these used to be uh, you know, seasonal lakes those days, right? Because rainwater uh, used to come into this and then they used to dry up during the summer. But because they haven't been desilted uh, for so many years, the reason is that sewage has been flowing into these lakes uh, for so many years, so they were never dry, uh, and they have become uh, the, uh, the perennial lakes, uh, so to speak. Uh, and because of that, they haven't been desilted for so long. And the accumulated silt and sludge and the uh, garbage of so many years mm -hmm. has uh, really uh, brought the water lake quality energy. down, the water quality has come down, uh, and these are leading to health issues. Something like 50% of the diseases being reported are yes. waterborne. Lot of uh, E. coli. Then you have, you know, the farmers using this water for irrigation, so and they are growing some vegetables uh, from this water, right? Uh, then that vegetable is coming back to us. So you have industrial influence also entering these lakes, and these are uh, entering our food chain, either through the vegetables which we are, which are coming back to us, or the hongena sopu which is growing in these lakes are being used by the farmers as fodder. 
uh, and that bioaccumulation happens that come again comes back to us as milk right so these are uh, issues which um, yeah, you know which which have been highlighted um, mm -hmm. so we need to figure out how to fix these yeah so the next uh, issue is the mosquitoes mm -hmm. these these have become breeding grounds for mosquitoes so i think these are some of the issues which are making these lakes to be liabilities